Hi, Young Investor Society. This is James Fletcher, founder of Young Investor Society. And today we'll cover lesson number three, which is how to calculate a PE ratio or the price to earnings ratio of a company. Um, this is found in, in unit two, which is the value of a stock. So our objectives today are first, we're going to learn how to calculate a PE ratio and what it means. And then second, we're going to put all the lessons we learned in this unit together, um, analyzing a PE ratio, the market cap, the value of a company to analyze what we think a company's value will be. Okay, so first, um, I would challenge you to go to your financial news uh, page that you prefer the most, whether it's Yahoo Finance or Zax.com or Morningstar or Guru Focus, um, and, and look up a company. So find, find a company that you're interested in. Maybe it's a company that you're looking at um, pitching for your YIS stock pitch competition. Um, but look up a company and find three variables on, let's say, Yahoo Finance. Look up its earnings per share, and so write that down look up its current stock price, and look up its P-E ratio. So we have these three variables, and then ask yourself, what is the relationship between these three variables? How do they work together? Um, and let's say um, you find a stock and, and it's trading at $10 a share, and the EPS, or the earnings per share, is $1 per share, and the P-E ratio is 10x, or 10 times. So how does this work together? It works together in a pretty simple formula. It's the price per share divided by the earnings per share, so $10 divided by $1 equals 10x. Um, another way to think about the P-E ratio is if you're buying earnings, so if you're buying $1 of earnings, how many years of that earnings do you have to get before you get your money's ba money back? So in, if the P-E ratio is 10 times, at those current earnings, it would take you 10 years to get all of the money that you invested in the company back, or 10 years for those profits to match with, with the stock price. Um, and so that's why we would say a P-E ratio is 10x. Um, so we'd encourage you now to do handout 2.3 and you'll go through this worksheet um, and it will help you in, in calculating and determining a PE ratio. What you'll find on this handout is one of our, our, our great graphs, which is um, it, it shows the spectrum of PE ratios. And here you'll see that um, the average PE ratio, so think of a PE ratio as almost the price which you're paying for a stock. So it's, it's um, it's, it's the gauge which puts apples to apples and makes everything comparable. On average, so over the past 100 years, the S&P 500 has averaged a P-E ratio of 16 to 17 times. So 17 times is the average P-E ratio. Um, so what does it mean if you pay a five times P-E ratio for a company? So most companies that trade at a very low multiple or a low P-E ratio, would be low quality companies. So this would be a company with very low growth or even declining earnings, um, very risky or cyclical earnings, or, or high debt levels, or maybe this company is at risk of going bankrupt. We would put a very low multiple, very low PE ratio on this company. Whereas there's some companies that trade at 20 times PE ratio or 25 or 30. So above the market average, what would this tell you about the company? It would most likely tell you that this is a high growth company, that these earnings are growing. It would also tell you most likely that this is a high uh, quality company. So this company probably has high returns. So companies that have 20 times PE ratio probably make an ROE above 15%. Companies that make uh, 25 times PE ratio probably have an ROE above 20%. And so look at this um, activity, and in this activity is this great chart, which you will see in future lessons as well, which will help be an answer key for you as you're evaluating companies um, in determining what PE ratio is fair, and are you getting a deal, or are you paying too much for the quality of this business?
Okay, let's review that handout. Um, P-E ratio calculation is really pretty simple when we, when we go through it, right? So, so company number A, um, $62 divided by 2.95 equals a P-E ratio of 21.02 times. Uh, company B, a uh, share price of $22 divided by 1.95 equals 11.28 times P-E ratio. Um, just on uh, question number three, just on the P-E ratio, which company would you say is viewed by the market as a higher quality company? Would be company A because it has a higher P-E ratio of 21 times. So if, if we were just looking at the P-E ratio, we would assume that the market is, is viewing company A as a higher quality company. Four is an interesting question. Does having a low P-E means it's not a good investment? Um, actually, it's the opposite. So being a low P-E may be the opportunity. If in this case you decide that in this example that company B is a better company than company A, or let's say it's equivalent in terms of growth and returns and margins, then um, trading at a big discount is your opportunity. Um, so we remember we want to pay the best price for the value of that stock. Um, so one way to look at it is to look at a company, look at the fundamentals, look at the numbers, and then decide what you think is a fair P-E ratio, um, and then look to see what the market is paying, and maybe the market's paying much higher than you would have paid, Maybe the market is paying much lower than you would have paid. One rule of thumb to thinking about um, a P-E ratio and how to apply it is um, think about um, how much you would pay for a meal. So just coincidentally, the numbers seem to line up with, with the price of a meal. So um, a cheap meal, let's say, if you go to McDonald's and get you know, a value meal could be $5. So it's a good price, maybe the quality is not as good, but it's a, it's a good price and um, you know, maybe that's $5. Um, maybe if you're taking a date and you're going to a nice restaurant, um, then you would pay you know, $17 the, for that meal. Or maybe you're going to a very fancy restaurant and, and the quality of this food, the meat, the experience that you have is phenomenal and you're willing to pay $40 for that meal. It's a special occasion. It's your anniversary or your birthday. And so maybe $40 is the right number, right? And so on that spectrum, you pay different prices for the quality um, of the meal that you're willing to eat. Um, P-E ratio actually fits in that spectrum quite nicely where you know $5 is, is cheap, low quality, you know, $10, $15 is, is maybe average for, for a night out, for a meal. And then $40, $50 is very expensive. And you wouldn't want to pay $40, $50 for a McDonald's meal. Here you would clearly be overpaying. But if you can eat a very nice meal for $15, then you're getting a bargain. And so what you pay and the value is what you get. Remember our lessons. Stocks fluctuate wildly over the course of the year, but the true value of a company does not change that much. The reason why they fluctuate vol volatility is Mr. Market, that the market moves with sentiment of the market. Remember, the P-E ratio is a great place to start out by determining the value of a company. If you tell me a price per share of a company is $10, that doesn't tell me much because I don't know how many shares outstanding they have and I don't know how much profits they generate. But if you tell me the P-E ratio of a company is 10 times, I know immediately that that is looking fairly cheap. And remember the two most important things in determining the value of a company are first, how much the profits are going to grow and second, how long is that profit stream sustainable at that level. So with all that information, let's put it all together and let's do an activity. And this activity is the three most valuable companies in the world. And we'll go through them, and this was back in 2014, so it's a bit outdated, but we still have the same lessons. The three most companies, valuable companies in the world that we're going to discuss today are Apple, Google, and Exxon. And you'll see in your worksheet um, that the challenge is to invest $10,000 
in, in one of them. And, and we give you a bunch of numbers here, and we give you the stock price performance of these companies. Now, when you look at the numbers, you can see that ExxonMobil, the oil company, has the highest revenues, but it also has the highest costs and also one of the highest profits. Um, whereas Apple and Google are growing faster and have higher profit margins. Think about the businesses. Think about what business you think is more attractive 10 years from now. Think about what's driving the growth and the sales of this company, whether it's Apple and their smartphones, and think about what makes these companies sustainable. Um, ExxonMobil has actually been around much longer than, than Apple or Google. Does that mean we have more visibility on the long-term long -term sustainability of, the, of that business? What are the risks that could completely change the paradigm and, and, and affect these businesses in a negative way? Could it be technology changes? And which company has a higher risk of having these technologies uh, changed on them? So take a look at these numbers. We don't know the answer because we're asking 10 years from now. But think about the framework that you would analyze. Um, what is the PE ratio that you're having to pay for these companies? What is the growth that you're getting? What are the ROEs or the returns that you're getting or the quality of these businesses? How volatile are these industries? And how sustainable are these profits? So take a think at it. Um, if you're really gung-ho, you could even invest some of your own money in these companies. These are some of the blue chip flagship companies. But I hope this unit has given you all the tools necessary to start analyzing what is the value of a stock and to start having an idea to find bargains out there of when a stock is cheap and when a company is, is undervalued relative to its long-term value. Thanks so much. All right, I hope, young investors, that you enjoyed that lesson. Uh, P-E ratio, for the first time you hear about it, sometimes can be confusing. Um, so let me answer a couple of your common questions. Um, the first one is, James, I hear about P-E ratio, but I also hear there's other, is that the only valuation technique to use? Um, absolutely not. There's, there's lots of ways that you can analyze a company, whether it's, um, whether it's a good value. So other valuation techniques are, uh, price to book multiple, um, dividend yield or free cash flow yield, um, price to sales, so how much price for sales per share. We will talk about um, other valuation techniques in more advanced lessons. Um, you, can, you can use these valuation techniques and you can see their historical trend of a company and see whether this is on the high end or the low end of their, their historical trading range. Um, but in a nutshell, no, P-E ratio is not the only uh, method. It is the most common method, and it does give you a ballpark of where this stock is trading year to year. Second question is, um, James, um, I, I see a stock used to trade at 20 times P-E ratio, but now it has sold off um, dramatically. The stock's gone down, and now it trades at a much lower P-E ratio. Um, how do I know whether the stock will re-rate and trade at, at a higher P-E ratio again, or, or will it just continue to trade lower? Um, it's a good question. So anytime um, the market is telling us that something is wrong with the company, we need to take the market very seriously. And so um, there could be many reasons why a stock would go from trading at 20 times P-E ratio to why it would trade at 10 times P-E ratio. Um, these reasons could be there could be um, a large competitor which is putting pressure on the industry. Maybe Amazon is competing with their core business, and so we don't have visibility on, on what those profits will be in the future. Um, maybe the market is worried about high debt levels, and the company um, may have increased their bankruptcy risk or their ability to pay back loans. Maybe the growth is just, um, maybe this used to be a growth business and the market was um, pricing in large growth and now we realize that there's no growth or there may even be decline in the long run. Um, and, and all of these factors can dramatically change what price investors are willing to pay for the company. And so, um, but at the same time, remember that Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful. 
there are also opportunities where the market is, is, is going through their Mr. Market cycles and you can pick up a great quality business at 10 times PE ratio, 12 times PE ratio. You just need to be sure that you understand the long-term profits and the sustainability of these business and that you can call that inflection point the right way. Um, what a, um, there was a question on the activity of Amazon, Google, and Exxon. And the question was, Apple seems to be a high growth company with high margins. Why does it trade at 12 times PE ratio or has it in the past? Um, Apple is a great company and Warren Buffett owns Apple and, and it has a fantastic brand. But it's also a consumer electronics business and consumer electronics businesses um, in general tend to trade it at low PE ratios. Why do they trade at low PE ratios? Because there is risk to, to the product sales in the long run. So if you look at Apple selling smartphones, Apple is a dominant seller of smartphones, but so was Motorola. What happened to Motorola? It went bankrupt. Um, so was BlackBerry. What happened to BlackBerry? It declined substantially and hardly anyone owns Blackberries anymore. Um, Nokia used to be the largest smartphone manufacturer in the world and now, now it's dwindled and its profit margins have been cut dramatically. And so Apple operates in a competitive consumer facing um, tech environment where the technology is changing. And so that tends to be why the market gives Apple a lower PE ratio than say a Google which, which has a winner-take-all business, a dominant network effect in search, and um, generates high profit margins, high returns, and high growth, the market is willing to pay a 25 times, 30 times PE ratio for Google, whereas Apple, it's been tougher because it's a consumer tech business. Um, I hope this helps explain that question, and thanks so much for your participation.